Hey guys, what's going on? It's Gravi Robber here, and today I'm gonna to be bringing you guys a little tutorial on environments and speed painting type studies that you always see going around YouTube here. Um, to start off, uh, people think they can just jump right into environment studies. They see all the pros do it, that they'll just start off one layer, blah, big brushes everywhere, and something starts to come out of it. But for beginners, that's not really the case. They're, the pros that you see doing that have a lot of basics and fundamentals under their belt. So they're able to nail down perspective and the lighting correctly the first couple brush strokes. While beginners, you may need to do some more studies beforehand, use a ton of references, and then you're able to have a nice looking product. Um, I in no way consider myself a pro or anything. So I have already done a few thumbnails, chose a thumbnail, and that's kind of what I'll be going off of. Basically just um, what you do to have a good thumbnail, you can just block off a good portion. Oh, those are kind of uneven. Uh, size doesn't really matter just as long as it's kind of the same ratio if it's longer or taller as what you plan on doing and then I have a green brush here and then pretty much just block in values block in shapes you can do um, usually it's best to do like three values so you get your white here and then your mid-tone just a gray and then your black so let's say you're doing like a tree so what you can have is maybe you'll have the distance uh, the background be the mid-tone white and then black for the closest which obviously isn't correct but by doing these little studies you can figure out which way is gonna look the best so then the closest is the black here and then the tree whatever you know you kind of get it, but that's one of the things along with the basics. So I'll take off those layers. Um, See, so yeah, I'll be going off of my uh, thumbnail here, and then I'd highly recommend to kind of get an idea down of what you want to do. Um, you can just jump right in, use some big brushes, see if something comes out of it, but when you're a beginner, 90% of your stuff is going to look pretty bad if you just jump in without any preliminary sketches or studies. Um, also, grabbing reference images is never a bad idea. Always look for good references, whether it be for perspective, shapes, buildings, objects to put in your thing, whatever. Um, so yeah, let's get jumping in here. I'm gonna start off. I have a little palette going on, on a different document here. So we'll kind of just block in some color. Not sure what I want to do for this guy. Kind of want to do like an alien planet type thing. Weird alien atmosphere. You know, typical cliche concept art. Stuff like that, you know. But yeah, I'm just basically, to start off, you kind of want to block in the larger shapes. You're not, you don't want to jump right into detail. Some people do, but it's not going to come out right if you don't have the whole painting looking good as a whole right off the start. Um, another thing up in the top right, you can usually set your thing right next to swatches uh, to navigator, and that kind of gives you a little thumbnail. So you can see if your, if your sketch is reading right basically just means if it's looking correct or not if it's the values are reading the lighting's reading everything like that all right uh, let's throw just remember though like whatever you throw down since it's in Photoshop, it can always be adjusted, whether it be an adjustment layers and you throw in curves or a color layer, 
stuff like that, you know. So don't be a too too afraid to kind of practice different colors and different techniques. Right now I'm just using a um, hard round brush, the default brush, with the, it has the um, set size, so the size doesn't change with pen pressure or whatever. Uh, just kind of playing around, getting some shapes going. You know, people sometimes think that like abstract art is completely bogus and it's just a load of crap. But realistically, I've heard this from other concept artists too though, um, it's kind of a big thing, you know, because when you understand how abstract art actually works with it being mainly composition, composition first, you know, you... Your, your stuff will improve if you tend to look at your piece as an abstract piece and not so much for the actual subject matter that is within it. You know, I've heard different artists like Feng Zhu and um, other guys I've talked to say that thing, that they do look at their pieces as abstract, piece, abstract works and uh, it definitely can improve some compositions and some errors if you're looking like that. Let's see. So it's looking kind of monotone right now. Need to throw in ugly blue there. Just kind of playing. I mean, nothing's nothing's permanent right now, so it's fun to be able to block down. Um, let's see here. Oh, and then I'm, I'll. I'll just kind of along the way show different techniques that people are always curious of that I know I was as a beginner and whatnot. Um, the lasso tool, you can get a lot of good random hard edges this way. A lot of people use it for environmental environments and uh, uh, different random shapes that they're kind of going for. just to kind of get get some sort of flow going with your painting. You can get a lot of good depth with um, the lasso tool because you can build upon layers and just easily do quick shapes and get good gradients going on. Uh, let's see. I need to bring my... Sorry, I'm just moving my swatch around so that I can, my palette, so I can kind of goof around and be able to look at my thumbnail sketch. All right. Another way that I see artists kind of uh, um, using different tools is by using like, they'll set a new layer and then they'll change it to color or overlay or the, I mean there's different settings and stuff but so if I set this one to color and then I grab a pretty saturated orange the soft brush you can get different effects like that uh, color dodge you can get a nice some nice lighting effects that you wouldn't normally be able to really color grab and get those and get nice gradients like that. Kind of like that. All right, let's see here. And I do have quite a few brushes. Um, sometimes it gets annoying because it takes forever to load them. And... But I do have a, a pretty good set that was made by uh, Darken, who's a pretty well-known uh, concept artist. Um, 
I'm a pretty big fan of, of his work and his brushes. So I think if you just Google his name, it has two A's in it, I believe, or two R's, something like that, you'll be able to find it. Um, he has on his website, his personal website, a link, I think it's like under tutorials or something, that you can actually download his full brush set, with, which is pretty generous for the dude. I mean, someone who's that well known has great work like that and is sharing his custom made brushes that he had to put time into and studying into to get down perfect. I mean, that's, that's a pretty big deal. So uh, definitely appreciate that if you guys do go ahead and pick up those brushes. And just throwing in some more texture. Nothing's permanent. Also, a lot of people I know get really discouraged when they watch those speed painting videos on YouTube. I mean, I'm guilty I have some myself. You guys got to realize that those are sped up like 2,000%, if not more. Mine are usually 2,000%. So when you see someone just going crazy across the screen and you're just like, wow, why can't I paint that fast? That's just nuts. Um, you got to realize that that's, it's way slower and they're actually taking time into their work and are planning stuff out. So, I mean, don't get discouraged in that fact because it's really not as easy as it looks. Time, it'll, you'll start to get faster as it progresses, so don't worry about it. <clears throat> Heck, I remember when I was first started digital painting, um, just the simplest little things would just take me hours upon hours, but hey, I mean, who, what are you in a rush for? There's, there's nothing, nothing that you need to get done, I mean, unless you're working for some company, but then my guess is you wouldn't be still a beginner if that was the case. Uh, here I just grabbed some of this lighter orange color and I was just throwing in some highlights, you know, just to get my brain kind of working something going here. So I have my, let's see here, my horizon line is about there. Perspective's kind of coming off. All right, sorry, excuse me. So yeah, um, where was I? Still just playing around with color. Um, I, I started out with a soft round brush. Uh, sometimes I'll start with a more a more grungier brush to kind of get some grit on the paper, on the canvas. To, uh, just so, I don't know, you, you kind of have to see for yourself what I mean by when you use like a more textured brush. Um, it's pretty nice. Sure, what the shape's gonna be. Just kind of getting a spiky, spiky feel to this whole thing. some blue to kind of bump up those shadows. The blue I originally had was a little bit too saturated. It was kind of conflicting with these orange and yellows. Just throw on some color and just playing around with it. The main factor I would say for landscapes here is pretty much going to be lighting. Lighting is such a key factor in so many paintings, but 
especially in landscapes if you don't want your stuff to really look amateur um, do do a bunch of studies on lighting and how lighting affects everything within the environment the environment do uh, work try working just from a photo once um, you know trying to copy a photo or something you'll see that you'll be you'll learn stuff pretty fast as far as how light wraps around a rock hard edges um, you know but just come with time and practice let's see here what do I want to do These mountains in the distance kind of have an old ancient Japanese style look to it. Kind of like that. Kind of got, looks like, little Japanese huts going on here. Yeah, I mean, there. I find a lot of times that kids try and rush into detail. They just wanna, they want it to look pro right off the start, you know. And I mean, that's not gonna happen. Even with the pros, it doesn't just happen right away. It takes, it takes some development within the painting for it to actually start, actually start to, to pull some form together. If you're actually watching this in real time, I'm talking as I'm painting. This is kind of the first time I've ever I've ever done one of these, so you guys have to let me know if you were digging this or if I was too distracted and I paused too much or something, you know, just just let me know because I can always go back to the, the old way of recording over <laughs> after the fact. Hmm, let's see. I've always been a pretty big fan of of landscapes and concept art with uh, with landscapes here. I also do do quite a bit of traditional painting, oil painting, but oil painting landscapes, I don't know, it's kind of kind of a drag. It's not bad for smaller studies, plain air when you're actually outside, but going off of images and trying to come up with your own oil painting is, yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's for you, but it's, it's definitely not for me. Kind of a, a basic, fundamental thing. Um, if you want your stuff to look to go, to look a lot more professional, I would recommend looking into reflective light and reflective lighting. Um, it will really make your stuff look a lot more realistic and more believable. Uh, 
a lot of a lot of people you know don't really know what it is and it's just it's just light bouncing off of other objects and glowing like so here I'll just show for example on this guy here let's just say if it's a sphere up here we have the main highlight which is coming from that sun you saw earlier from up there oops there so if you have that light coming in then you're gonna have the shadow midway through there and then on the other side you're gonna get all the light that's reflecting off of rocks that are like let's say right here this sun is gonna come bounce off of this and then come back right here so or the sky the different different lights around it are gonna reflect off of it and this goes for pretty much any object you will ever find or see if you just look around if you just look around your house right now you will see tons of objects that all have bounce light reflective light it's it's just a way of nature <laughs> so definitely look into and study that because that is a huge component to painting and having your stuff look professional I'm not sure if I'm liking this little building thing. I don't know where I'm going with it really. Again, might scrap it. That's the beauty of digital painting. A couple easy swoops and I'll talk to you guys in my next tutorial about custom brushes and the benefits of them and also the consequences that can come of them too. <laughs> I don't think that they're all just good. Let's see, I'm gonna throw up a curves layer it's like it's getting a little too dark in my darks and then I'm gonna throw up a let's see color balance layer and here we go and then we're gonna get a little bit more. Let's see what I'm on here. What people sometimes don't realize too is once you put in these adjustment layers, you can easily set them to screen, overlay, soft light, hard light. I mean. The possibilities with it are just endless. So don't feel constricted that when you throw when you put those layers up and set them that that's all that they can do. I mean, change the opacity, set them down. Some people really overuse these and they just it just comes out looking terrible and you can just see that oh, they put the orange and purple gradient map over that one. That's pretty obvious, you know. Stuff like that. So keep that in mind. Let's see. It's 
kind of starting to look like a scrapyard or something. <laughs> this is one of my my favorite brushes from the Dark Impact. It's kind of like this odd shape. I'll show you. I don't know. It has like it's really grungy feel to it. You get this nice texture. Now we'll get this to too too many strokes there. Um, you can you can get a pretty soft edge if you just kind of lightly go around. The opacity changes pretty pretty good with it. Then you can get really hard edges or a nice texture. It's pretty much like the all-in-one brush. I really dig it. See, I don't know if, I, if I'm liking where this color is going. All right. Um, now that we kind of have a general, general color scheme, I'm gonna go ahead and adjust this quite a bit. Um, I'm gonna take the saturation down. I noticed kind of got a little saturated. One thing that I will do is, uh, so on a very top layer, I will put an all black, fill it with black, it's kind of a brown, fill with black and then go under the little bar here by opacity and then change it to saturation. And I'll give you a completely black and white sketch of your current painting and uh, that way you can kind of look and see how your overall values are going. Uh, I don't quite have a whole lot of highlights. Um, not really like in this area. The distant is uh, the foreground or background. It's kind of a... Uh, so you can always turn that on and off right there. We'll go ahead and play around with this color a little bit. So I grabbed a kind of a soft, soft round brush, just going in and making this sky not so uh, flat, looks like just one solid green, kind of change that up because that's not how the sky is. I'm also going to create a new layer. Um, grab like a peachy color and I'm going to set this layer to linear dodge. Uh, I'm going to grab a soft round brush actually. I don't feel this sun is very convincing yet. That's too much. Hmm. I figure out how I wanna. Oops. So now I have a new layer, and I set it to color dodge, and I grabbed a really dark and all the way to the right uh, saturated orange. Just put on this orange around and get it off. And kind of like what's going on over here. It's kind of a nice texture and whatnot. Uh, let's go around and uh, let's 
I'm gonna grab, I kind of have like these these cloud brushes that are in the darken pack, and I, I really like those. They give a nice natural cloud look. I've always I've always struggled with clouds. Maybe I'll make a tutorial on that just to show you how terrible I am at them. I've always been jealous of anyone who can can do some nice looking clouds. I'm on a new layer now, I'm just kind of Throwing in these, uh, get some atmosphere in here. So another another thing, um, when you're doing a painting, I know they say you want just they're like, oh, we got to get a dark enough time limit. They'll set a timer for an hour and think that they'll have something come out of that. But it's really good also to take a break once in a while and you know. Go walk around your house, go look at something else, and then when you come back, you will see multiple errors that you can fix easily. Like, wow, I'm dumb. I didn't realize those things were the same exact value. I'm going to change that, you know? So there's different stuff like that that you'll find yourself coming across. Let's see. So I told you about the the uh, checking your values with the, the black and white saturation thing here. Another way you can kind of check values to get it down is uh, just by simply squinting. Um, learned that from my painting professor at the at the call at the university that I'm attending. Um, you just can simply simply squint. And it's such a simple thing, but I never thought to even do that. That just squinting can give you pretty much a three value look at your painting. So you can see if the values are too close that you need to kind of separate them a little bit more. Um, different, different stuff like that. So yeah, yeah, kids, don't forget to squint. Kind of like how right around here in this bottom right corner, got some nice textures going on there. And that's just by random brush strokes with custom brushes that uh, I'll have to definitely show you guys custom brushes if you guys aren't familiar, familiar with them. They're, they're really nice. What you gotta remember is back to another fundamental thing, art 101. Um, in environments, in real life, landscapes, just whatever, um, the farther something gets away from you, the less saturated it's gonna be and the more um, it's gonna be the color of the sky. Because it's just atmospheric perspective. So if my sky is green here, See how this mountain here starts to fade into the atmosphere there because it's farther away. You're not going to have this value of mountain right here, a dark way off in the distance because, I mean, that doesn't look right because it isn't right. So that's another thing. So a way you can do that to push something back, it's called, you know, you're pushing it back in, in depth is simply by grabbing one of the sky colors, you have a bunch here, and having a soft round brush and lightly tapping, because hopefully you have uh, pen pressure, and you can kind of just fade it off, and it gives it like a really, really nice realistic look, like as if it's just sitting back in space. Like these nice oranges I got going on here. 
hundred green is kind of a nice uh, Trying to throw some some texture around the sky is kind of kind of still sitting at too uh, too blocky from when we first used just uh, just a soft round brush. Sometimes that look is nice. Sometimes I'm like, eh, I want to throw some texture everywhere because I'm a pretty big fan of texture. Give some nice uh, nice cloud cloudy look, sort of, I guess you could say. little sort of man-made looking objects there along with these little house things. Another good thing, um, notice how the closer stuff obviously has a lot more detail because that's what your eye will be able to see. So stuff like this off in the distance is just going to be a flat silhouette. You know, I mean, sometimes less truly is more, so you can get really nice effects and detail, like, wow, like, how did they, you know, do that? But all you simply did was these little silhouette shapes, and it looks really nice. Not too sure about those two tower things, if I, if I like them yet, but <laughs> we'll come back to them and see. I'm throw in a little kind of purplish, really dull purple color, purple tone. Man-made objects will obviously have a lot more straight edges, won't be so random as like rocks and mountains that will have all these crazy weird edges and cracks and stuff. So it's another reason I love doing environments is because I mean you can you don't have to be perfect with stuff. You can be sloppy and random and it's like wow I just made an awesome looking rock right there. <laughs> like that looks pretty realistic. Go ahead and grab another smoky type brush and uh, it's a little too big. I'll just throw in some, some atmosphere here.
this blue over here is a little too strong. I'm going to knock that down and kill it somehow. If you guys have any other recommendations for tutorials, I'm always looking for feedback, always looking for anything, I'm always looking to learn, so I mean if you have suggestions for me, or obviously there's a ton of people that are a lot better than me, so I mean if you're one of them, throw me something that would help me out, or you know, a little tip or something, you see me doing something wrong because I'm positive, I already know it, there's tons of mistakes within this piece, but you know, I just want to pass on some information to people that aren't quite at this level yet, but those that are working on it by watching this tutorial. Put on another light source down here. I've ever done a green sky painting. I kind of, kind of dig that. It's kind of sweet. I'm just doing some water back and forth strokes. Just nothing's permanent here, so you can always go back and do something. I mean, this is this is reading reading fairly well. I like it. It's not bad. It's definitely a lot of room for improvement though. Throwing some rocks there. Now I'll kind of jump into some little details. I understand that this painting isn't going to be nowhere near finished or anything, but you know, maybe just a presentable piece to a client like oh yeah here the direction that you can head in or no that's nothing that I want you know I could go anywhere there. just keep in mind I mean this has only been I don't know how far I'm I can keep a track an hour maybe maybe more I don't know I've lost track but you know that's only one hour and if you're planning on painting eight hours a day you know you know eight of these bad boys out and presenting the time the day is over, that's, that's a pretty good day.
like I said before about the whole abstract composition and whatnot, uh, composition is a huge deal. So along with that and lighting, definitely look those things up. Like I noticed that I had too much of a big shape here that kind of I had a shape here that went along with this shape. I just like continued and I wasn't really digging that. So that's why I kind of took out that big shape there. Probably go in and kind of mess around with this one to kind of. Yeah, because you don't want too much of the same. I mean, you do want repetition once in a while, though, is not bad, but kind of gives unity to a painting when you have repetition. But at the same time, you can also just destroy a painting by having too much of that. And so, like I noticed here, like this rock and then with this background, they're both too sharp and aren't really in the atmosphere at all. So like this one, this tower thing, I'm going to have to push back because it's way too close and it feels like it's just literally right behind this rock. So I'll just grab and grab some of this background color and just dab it around till it kind of goes back in space. And it will make, by bringing the value, this lighter value up, it will make this darker value rock come forwards towards you. This is a really good technique to use. You'll find in a lot of amateur paintings that stuff will just be boom here. Boom, here, you know, just, it just won't look right because there is no atmosphere. So, another huge issue. Sorry if I'm throwing too much at you. And this is my first real-time painting and talking with it, so I'm kind of, kind of trying to think of a lot of different stuff that can, can help you guys out. But it's also tough because I'm trying to think about this painting too. Not really turning out the greatest, you know, so. <laughs> and then once you kind of, I mean, I've kind of been blocking in, getting general idea of stuff. You can start to zoom in and, you know, get finer details down. But just remember to save those, save those till the end, because a lot of kids will think that they need to jump in right away, that they... If they do all these details, it'll look right. But the thing is, you got to remember that. So kids will zoom in, they'll do this little section, and they'll just get it perfect. They'll zoom out, and for some reason, it just looks like complete crap. Because you got to look at a painting as a whole. You got to look at the whole thing, how each piece is correlating with each other. And then from there, you can start to slowly work on the details around and as a whole the painting will look a lot better because you're thinking about it as a whole, you're working on it as a whole not just sectionals because then your your painting won't look like it's going together at all, it'll just look like you have well it's a really nice nicely done car, it's a odd looking mountain thing oh that spaceship, you know, that looks weird, but you know different stuff like that Color, color, color. These mountains are further back than this one, so I'm trying to kind of push that back. And let's see. This mountain rock thing is closer than this one. So I'm going to have to kind of push that back just a little bit. Not too much, though.
setting that one to screen kind of lighten it so I don't want to lose too much value. I do want that back more. Stuff closer to you is going to be darker. There's going to be more contrast. So like these rocks and ledges closer to me are going to have darker darks than this little mountain guy way over here. Too much of a straight line right there. You know, this thing, uh, it's starting to look, starting to look fairly decent. I mean, it could, it could continue to go somewhere. I'll just start to, to put in some details. You know, maybe you can throw in a little path and some guys walking. You know, different stuff like that. So we're closing in on an hour here. Um, there's a few things with the composition that I don't really like too much, so I'm going to kind of see what I can do about that real quick. thrown in some different brushes there. I'm not sure if I like this far off thing being taller than the stuff that's closer to us here. Sometimes what I do is um, to get nice verticals, you can just hold shift. If you hold shift and brush, no matter if you go up and down, if you start going by side to side, or you can go perfect verticals, you can get some nice, really harsh um, strokes from that.
see here. Can I get this little path type thing up here? A little bridge going up to God knows where. I don't know if I would follow that up there. <laughs> Gonna throw in kind of these repetitive little rock formation things. By this point, since I already kind of had everything laid down, I'm pressing pretty hard. And now that I'm pretty far into the detail or blocking of the shapes, I can uh, start to go more into detail and I can go into smaller brushes because you don't want to, like I said earlier, I think I did, is uh, don't want to be using really small brushes and scratching, doing little chicken scratches everywhere off the start. You save that for the, for the detail. On my, my tablet, I have a little scroll so I can go larger and then right down to small pretty fast, but if you have a like cheaper Wacom. Um, sometimes they won't have the scroll, so you just use the bracket keys on the keyboard, and that's a really fast way to size up and down. I'm not sure if I had stated that earlier or not. Just kind of throwing in these little shapes here. I may continue this one in a, in a part two. I'm not sure yet. I guess I'll have to stare at it for a little bit longer and see if it's worthy. I'm not really, not really too happy with the outcome of this one, but I may just start a new one, something else. But if you guys have any suggestions or thoughts about this or directions it can go or ideas on another tutorial, leave me a comment. Um, I, I'm always reading the comments, always looking for feedback. I'll try to respond as much as I can to, to everyone that's inter interested in something, hearing something, so. It's coming out coming along decent I guess
Put a little reflected light on these guys. Give them some shape. So they're not just flat silhouettes, although sometimes I like the flat silhouette look. Shadows. Not going to go too heavily into detail on this one. Just wanted to get a good solid hour which I think I'm, I'm either really close or a little bit over that hour Alright, I think I'm going to call it pretty much good. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's an alright sketch, speed painting. I can obviously go a lot more with it. I might pick this one up in a day or two, maybe tomorrow. I don't know. If I, if I really feel the urge to paint, I may come back to this one. But it's still pretty loose right now. Um, let me check that. Ah, I don't know. Anyways, uh, one of the last few things I do on my landscapes, um, I'll sharpen sharpen them quite a bit. You can create a new layer, apply image, and then filter, sharpen, sharpen. Do that a few times. There's also uh. Smart Sharpen, can sometimes get some really cool effects with that. Don't want to overdo it though, a lot of kids overdo it. Um, you can also just use the Sharpen Blur tool to get some cool effects there. Um, yeah, uh, so just feel free to kind of experiment around with the different tools that I told you about today I hope I hope a few of you guys kind of maybe took away a few things from from this tutorial again shoot me a comment message anything I love to hear feedback I love to hear anything I like to hear you guys thoughts so uh, let me know what you guys are thinking I want to get some ideas for some more tutorials rolling around. I'm about to hit 30,000 total views, I believe. Pretty exciting. Almost hitting 1,000 subscribers. Alright. I'm going to do a few more touch-ups on this one. Apply image. Um, sometimes you can just play around with like color dodge and linear dodge. 
and uh, you obviously don't leave them completely how they are, but you can do that. You can put a layer mask on them. Fill that layer mask with black. Grab some gnarly t uh, brush. Switch back to white, and then wherever you brush, it's going to be it's going to be that uh that linear dodge layer. Get some cool effects with that. Try out some. Switch back to black and cover it up again. Works real nicely. Let's see here. Just to get some texture kind of in this painting. I feel like it's kind of lacking that. All right, and then uh, just throw a new layer. You guys thought I was done, didn't you? Oh, I'm gonna keep going. It's exciting. Color dodge. Let's see. Let's go with color. Just trying to get a kind of orangish hue around that sun just a little bit. Don't really want that yellow. a blazing sun thing is gnarly maybe I'll throw in a really cliche item here yeah most of you guys watching this will probably cringe like why did he have to do that why did he put that in there but I don't care guys it's my painting do what I want <laughs> Kind of throwing a little moon guy thing in here. Remember, I mean, it's just like painting any other sphere, but this moon planet thing is going to be in between you and the sun, so you got to think about lighting in that in that sense. Clouds are going to be over it. 
So don't ever put your uh, your moon planet thing over clouds because it'll, it'll look pretty pretty bad and pretty amateurish. I got that. But we got our mountains in front of that. Do a last little uh, layer adjustment levels. Excuse me, I wanted curves here. Medium contrast. All right, guys, I think that pretty much sums it up for the tutorial right now. Um, I might come back to this and do a part two. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for sticking out the hour. Uh, let me know if you like these long, uh, full-length videos where I talk along myself painting. Um, otherwise, I can go back to the, the fast ones where I just talk over paintings that have been sped up. So, yeah, just shoot me some feedback. I would love to hear from you guys. Again, thanks for watching, and uh, stay tuned for a lot more to come.